Good afternoon, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I'm back home again, back on my vlogging camera, and I'm going to try not to either break or lose my camera for the foreseeable future. I actually wasn't planning on starting up vlogging again until tomorrow. Once I'm showered, I literally landed this morning. We had the best flight back, actually. We had, we both had an entire row of seats to ourselves. The plane was half empty, so I managed to get a good five or six hours sleep, hence why I'm still awake now, even though it's probably about 2 a.m. Um, Florida time. But it is so lovely to be back home reunited with my three favorite boys. And to try and battle the jet lag, Charlie and I are heading over to the pit kitchen this evening. Charlie went with Lilla while I was away and it was just as good, if not better, than he remembered last year. So we're heading there tonight for some delicious food, a lovely barbecue, and it is the most gorgeous evening evening. So aside from seeing my boys of course, the thing that I was most excited about coming home for was to see the garden and how it has grown since I've been away. We also have, as you might be able to see, a few new additions. I think the cushions are from uh, Birdie Fortescue and we've also finally replaced the small temporary table with our outdoor furniture set. It's obviously a lot more grey than the furniture which is still very new but the furniture being oak it will start to grey up probably by the end of summer once the elements have been on it a little bit so it should all match in a little bit better but it's actually the perfect size um, being rectangular it'll be lovely for putting some sharing boards on it's low enough that if you want to you can put your feet up on here and I'm sure we'll end up with a collection of different plant pots on here and to give you a little close-up of the cushions it's a really nice kind of raw linen tone with the green floral pattern and then you've got the green backing and then these ones are a little bit oh little bug. These ones are a little bit more patterned with the embroidered leaves um, and a kind of velvety backing. These will obviously come inside if we are due any rain but they look absolutely gorgeous. A really nice way of adding a little bit of style to the furniture. As you can see the herbaceous border is doing very very well. The lupins, Jack has cut them right back and we do have some, wow, in fact we've got loads of little baby lupins coming out to bloom to give us a second second flourish. Salvia doing very well. The grasses are just absolutely ginormous. <laughs> the grass on the lawn is looking a little bit dry. The verbena, oh my goodness, the verbena on my greenhouse is ginormous, definitely taller than I am. It's just going to look so amazing when the glass finally comes. It's actually due to be delivered at the end of this week, but we still don't have an install date, which is a bit weird. So we're literally just going to have panes of glass sat there for goodness knows how long. This border is looking amazing as well. The lavender, the salvia, the roses, the cosmos. We've got the lemon tree in the corner there doing very well. Oh, or is it a lime? Maybe it's a lime or do lemons start out this big? I'm actually not sure. Maybe it's a lime tree. And then, of course, the part of the garden that I was most excited to come down and inspect. I have already done a good picking of sweet peas, brought lots of the blooms in. And the thing that has grown the most, I have to say, is all of my pumpkins. We have so many little pumpkins coming through some not so little ones as well i don't know if you can see a white pumpkin quite a big white pumpkin in there and then we've got loads of the kind of um oops oh i don't know if that should have come off whoops golf ball size and lots of smaller ones in there too the beans have completely taken over the bean pole. I might need to snip them at the top so that they bush out a little bit. We have also got a hanging white pumpkin in here. That is very exciting. I think this could end up being my ginormous white ghost pumpkin. I can tell Charlie hasn't been picking them on too because there are so many. Some of them are absolutely ginormous. So I'm actually going to come down with my trug and pick a ton of monge too so that we get some fresh new crop. This bed is looking very green, oh my goodness. The tomatoes seem to be doing really, really well. They have multiplied. And we've got some fruit on the second tomato plant over there. Now this I was amazed by. I think it really helps having the framing so that the leaves are lifted up. But we have got loads, absolutely jam-packed down here with the, 
I think they're called yellow melon courgettes. Can you see there must be like five or six down there? Really excited to pick those. Oh, I can see another big yellow one in there too. Gosh, we have got a lot of the round courgettes this year. Really fun. This one didn't do so well. I don't even think we've got any fruit on this one, which is a bit strange, but we've got plenty of courgette fruit in there. A couple of beautiful artichoke, and I would say that this one is ready to be harvested, so maybe we can do that on the barbecue tomorrow. If you watched my video where I came out here the morning before I headed to Orlando, you might remember that I showed you this, and I was excited for it to come out, and here it is, my goodness. I think this is called a dinner plate dahlia because it is literally as big as a dinner plate, so I'm gonna pick that and bring that inside. Um, because as you can see, there's plenty more to come. And with dahlias, you can keep picking them and they'll keep growing and coming back again. The gladioli are getting tall along the back there, almost fighting for height with the cosmos. So many dahlias coming out to flower. This one here is really beautiful. And I think we've got some more pink ones that are going to bloom on this side. That one's really fun. More dahlias, roses in this slightly more shaded border. It's so interesting how this section blooms so much more than this section because of how much light it gets. And then I've noticed a lot more butterflies in the garden. All the caterpillars must have turned to butterflies while I've been gone, which is not a good sign for my brassicas. Um, even though they are bursting at the seams, gosh, look. The butterflies will just completely attack my kale if I was to let it out the cage. Charlie has been nibbling at the strawberries, which is good. The salad, some of it is starting to bolt, so I will be picking that. I think this lot has seen better days, so I might put some seeds in this corner instead. Um, and then we've actually got a big courgette almost a little bit too big actually down there, and then one above it, which is the perfect size for picking. And a lot of my broad beans are now the perfect size for harvesting as well in here. And my kohlrabis are looking absolutely ginormous. So a little bit of picking, some harvesting, and a bit of tidying up is in order. So I'm going to get on with that. And then when the sun starts to go down a little bit, I'm going to give everything a really good feed and water. And so here it is, a very colourful harvest for my first harvest back after our holiday. The kohlrabi being the biggest thing that I've harvested, and then these two courgettes, well three if you include this one, which is just absolutely ginormous. Really intrigued to cut into these, and I think they could be a new favourite. So many mange too. And there are so many more that are still growing, so I think we, I think the Monge 2 is this year's broad bean. Last year I had more broad beans than I knew what to do with, and this year Monge 2 has taken the number one spot, but luckily I love it in stir fries, I love it in salads. The evening before we went away, I also put it on lovely vegetable tart, which I didn't finish showing you because I had the Esther drama, but it was really lovely. And then we've also got lots of broad beans ready to be podded, so I'm going to get these all washed and into the fridge, ready for our tasty creation. Yep. We have come to the pit kitchen, Chipping yep. Norton, um, so it's about 20 minutes from us, um, and it's pop-up. It, I believe, when when's it here until September? I don't know, we'll um, leave the info we, down I below. I came in last night with your mum, and I'm back here again. <laughs> we came here last year, but on the last night, Yeah. and we loved the food, and we are like, oh, this is great, and they were like, oh, it's the last night, so we were a bit gutted. Yeah. But the two guys... Um, should we walk and Adam, talk? Yeah, we should walk and talk, come with me. <laughs> um, they're from London. Right. I believe, Ad, his is Adam, and I think it's Jamie, I believe they worked in some other industry before this and just found a massive passion for food. Oh, right. So it's kind of Greek slash Middle Eastern inspired. Okay. It's shawarma, isn't it? It's like mm. a flatbread that's a bit like a pizza sourdough base bread. Right. And then, well, meat or veg cooked over charcoal. Nice. So there's no gas involved. So it's like a barbecue. Exactly. But I think also the, the key I found last night was like... You know when you eat something and you know a lot of time's gone into it? So yeah, like the chicken marinating. had been brined, brined and marinated. Mm -hmm. um, marinated. Um, yeah, so um, lovely. Oh, look, it's you, mate. It's setting. Oh, look, it's Vivian Irons. Um, <laughs> Vivian Irons. Biffa. Yeah, so uh, look at the view. You don't really get restaurant views like this in London, do you? So it's all based out of this little temporary wooden shack. It's in a different location this year, but just as fabulous. They love a cornfield and they love a great view. And yeah. my gosh, what's actually growing in here? Is this corn and rapeseed? I, I think it's been let 
Well, I don't know. This stuff here looks just like it's been. Is that rapeseed? Yeah, rapeseed, wildflower, and then some corn. But look at these views. My goodness. It's probably going to be about a half hour wait for food, so maybe we'll go for a little walk. But what a fabulous setting. So is this burrata with focaccia or is it just like an olive oil bread? It is like a focaccia, yeah. Right, darling, what have we got here? So we have lamb neck. Lamb neck? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really succulent bit of meat. Mm -hmm. and there's like charred spring onion and stuff. Delicious. And is that tahini? I don't know. It said it on the menu. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you off the bread. Which looks spectacular. That looks so and yummy. And then this is the chicken thigh, which actually I think is my favourite. Chicken thigh thick, is the best bit of chicken. Juicy, what do you call it? Wrap? Shawarma. That's the shawarma, isn't it? Well, I think so, yeah. Mm. Not 100%. <gasps> my mouth is watering. Good morning, my darlings. I have got my Tutankhamun hairstyle going this morning. I've had a wonderful start to the day. It's Sunday today. I feel like today, I feel like this vlog generally is just gonna be the heat wave vlog. Today is the day that it's meant to get up to 30 degrees in the UK. Tomorrow, it could get up to 38, which I'm pretty sure is a world record. And I think parts of London are gonna be hitting 40 degrees. I never, recall a time when the UK has been 40 degrees before. So this is crazy. I have had a little bit of um, a warm up, <laughs> literally with Palm Spring, Palm, Palm Beach. But yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be wonderful. So seeing as today is the cooler of the three days, cooler, 27 to 30 degrees. Um, and I do have some unpacking, some unboxing, um, some pampering to do. I thought I would just get all of that done this morning. I'm currently catching up on Love Island, even though I did use my VPN to um, watch it while we were there. I, we only watched it on the laptop and there just wasn't quite enough Wi-Fi on the three days that we were on the boat. So I'm still about two days behind. So I'm just trying to catch up. The Wi-Fi on the boat, to be honest, was overall really good. Enough to pretty much do everything on your phone, but trying to download a TV program on my laptop was just not gonna work. So yeah, this morning, um, as you saw, I popped a Philip Kingsley Bond Builder in my hair this morning. My hair felt quite dry from all the beachiness, um, all the heat and I did use quite a lot of heat on my hair while we were away so I thought I would do a real reset so Philip Kingsley on my hair for about an hour while I did a peloton and then I used my Wella hair mask in the actual actual shower so I'm going to try and not use heat on my hair this week so I've just popped in this was actually a blogger mail from Aveda Nutriplenish Styling treatment foam. I've popped some of this in my hair when it was like 50% dry and then stuck in my heatless waves. I'm going to see if I can see if I can get any better at doing them this week using foam and styling products. So we shall see. I'm going to head out and do some gardening shortly and hopefully the sun will help to heat and also dry my hair. What else have I done this morning? You know when you just have that like proper reset pampering shower when you like double cleanse, double exfoliate, hair mask, let me know down below what you call that kind of shower. And I am now, as you can see, taking off my nail varnish. I ended up just putting on some builder recovery kind of nail varnish on the last day of our trip. Had bare nails the whole time before that. And now I'm gonna give myself a little at-home manicure. Didn't manage to get a slot to get them done properly this week, but you may remember during lockdown, I used a brand called Manicurist to do my at-home nails and it is actually amazing. Perfect if you want to do your nails at home, save time going to the salon, save money from getting them done professionally and literally the results are pretty much exactly the same. I've got some gorgeous colors and I think I might, just thinking if I should do this now or if I should actually do my nails after gardening, but I don't wanna miss out on the hottest part of the day outside, so I'll do them now, and then I'll just wear gardening gloves. I'm using the Green Flash Eau Dissolvant nail polish remover. It says that this is a 97% bio-based ingredients, leaving the, name, leaving the nails free from any nail polish residue. So the brand of all the products that I'm using is Manicurist, and Green Flash is their uh, kind of at-home gel 
collection. I remember the first time I ever started doing this, you can get something called the Perfect Kit, and that is, I keep it all <laughs> in this pouch. It's everything that you need to do your gel manicure at home. So the base coat and the top coat are essential. And then your LED lamp. And the most amazing thing about this is that it actually removes like normal nail varnish. So you get the 10 day plus lasting power of a gel manicure, but then it removes just like a normal nail varnish with a cotton pad and the dissolver. They're really conscious about the actual quality and the sourcing of the ingredients in all the products. So I believe most, if not all of the products are vegan. So their tagline for the Green Flash collection is that it's the first clean, gel nail varnish that removes like a normal nail varnish. So you're literally getting the best of both. I'm just reading some info from their website. It says it's formulated without toxic ingredients made from bio-sourced ingredients like potato, cotton, and sugar cane. Dries instantly, offers guaranteed shine, staying power for up to 10 days, removed in just two minutes with a gentle acetone-free nail varnish remover. No more damaged nails caused by traditional gel nails. Changing colours has never been easier. Okay, my old polish is off. I'm just going to go and rinse my hands quickly, give them a quick wash, and then we can decide what colour I'm going to go for. Okay, clean hands, clean nails. Now the fun bit is choosing the colours. I've got a few that I had from last time, and I've got a few new ones here, including <laughs> some lovely green shades. However, I am just a huge fan of the classic pinks. So this is shade number two. Do they have names as well? Shell Beige. And this, I would say, is probably my most classic choice of nail polish. Hopefully this will focus. Um, the colour on the lid is pretty accurate, so it's quite good for you to figure out what you're going to do without having to open them all. So this is Shell Beige, to be honest. This is probably the front runner. This next one, because I thought I would try something a little bit different, is a shade called Khaki. I think this might be a little bit more of like an autumnal nail, although I do think that is beautiful. Maybe I'll pop that on my toes later. Another really lovely green shade a little bit more fresh is this one here and this one is called mint if i was to do any nail art any little petals or things like that this one could be absolutely perfect another really nice natural this one works really well if you're doing a french manicure this one is called hortensia and it's a little bit more sheer so great for a really natural look i think that one's my mum's favorite and then lastly this one is pale rose and again really nice for a natural nail so i think i am going to go with the first one which is shell beige i normally do one layer of the base coat so that's got a little number one two minutes under the lamp i find that i can do the entire manicure in 20 minutes which is amazing i've also got 20 minutes of my love island episode left to watch natural wheat origin mm. i also just found out that um you can get green flash Manny's manicurist green flash Manny's at Dalesford in the Bamford Spa and they only ever use the best brands that have the best ingredients so that is a massive seal of approval from me I think also try by in London um anyway yes I'll do one coat two minutes of the base coat two coats at two minutes each of the color and then one layer of the top coat with three minutes under the lamp for the top coat I'm going to do a very quick little file I also got this little corrector pen, which is really, really helpful. To be honest, I don't make too many mistakes, but if I do, then this is a really easy way of correcting them. Um, and before I forget, if you use the code MANICUREISTJOSIE, that will get you 15% off the products, the kits. Um, so if you do want to have a go at gel, na gel nails at home, then I'll leave a link and my discount code in the description box down below. Oh no, my curls are starting to unravel on this side. Oh no, I've not even moved around much. <sighs> okay, that was exhausting. I think I actually got this from Amazon, but these really big um, blocks are very, very good if you've got slightly textured nails, if you just need help getting rid of any nail polish um, and just really creating a smooth nail bed. Okay, I have finally finished all of my nail prep. I have filed and shaped, and this is the current state of affairs. I've filed them down fairly short. In fact, I might go a tiny bit shorter because I don't want to 
too much soil under my nails when I'm gardening. Although I am going to try and remember to wear gloves. However, I can smell toast, which means that my breakfast is nearly ready. Charlie is cooking a lovely brunch for us. So I'm actually going to take all the bits and bobs um, downstairs. And then this is also a very good excuse to get out for washing up. <laughs> I can chat to Charlie while he finishes preparing his brunch. I might be required for table laying services. So let's go and see. here we go that was very quick and easy I would say under 20 minutes and I have given myself a beautiful very natural classic manicure so this is the shade shell beige from the manicurist green flash collection I so I did one coat of the base two coats of the color and then one coat of the top coat you definitely need the base coat and the top coat to do this mani but it's super duper easy so that is my super easy, quick, at-home, plant-based manicure. No nasty ingredients, really easy to do, and also super easy to take off. Um, just like normal nail varnish remover, which is a bit of a game changer and a ginormous time saver. So don't forget, darling, so I'm going to leave this linked down below, and you can use Josie Manicurist for 15% off. I'm now going to head out into the garden, so I am going to pop some gloves on, and I've got a lot of clearing and harvesting to do this morning. have quite a few deliveries to catch up on from when I was away and I'm going to do the two things this afternoon which you should not do with a fresh set of nails and that is unboxing parcels and gardening but I can't wait to undo these two deliveries in particular. First of all an order from Beauty Pie, my absolute favourites. I'm sure you guys all know what Beauty Pie is by now but it's essentially a luxury members only beauty club where you can get the most incredible quality um, beauty products pretty much direct from the factory factories so you're not paying those crazy prices and you still get the best quality ingredients. It is £59 for the year or £49 with my code which is Josie sent me, £10 off if you would like to join the best beauty club in the world I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are already using Beauty Pie, but anyway, I thought I would show you the latest bits. So Super Healthy Skin is literally the best range in my opinion. I love, oh, I thought I'd ordered the body lotion. Maybe that's gonna come separately. I love the Super Healthy Skin body lotion. It is a savior when my skin is dry and dehydrated. And this is a little mini of the body polish, which I'm going to take with me on our holiday. Yes, we're going away. I'm going away again um, next week. And a body polish is so great for maintaining your tan. And I get through this. I get through like the normal size, which is like this big in literally four or five showers. So it breaks my heart buying a really expensive body polish. This one is fantastic. The granules are really small, so I feel like I'm getting a really good scrub. And it's got mango and papaya enzymes. So enzymes actually almost like chemically nibble away at the dead skin cells, which sounds gross, but it gives you the best exfoliation in the whole world. And then I, especially after the cruise and our trip, I feel like I just really need some foot pampering. This is the peppermint leg and foot scrub. And also there is nothing more refreshing after a day in the sun, like a really hot day, a day on the beach, than just giving yourself a cool foot bath. <laughs> Let me know if you guys do that too, but it's just, I feel like if your feet are cool, then your whole body is cool. Um, so yes, I'm gonna give myself a little foot pamper at the end of the day, especially if I've been gardening. So this is the peppermint leg and foot scrub with pink Himalayan mineral salt, detoxifying algae and refreshing peppermint. That sounds heavenly, perfect for a summer. 
summer pedicure. Oh, here we go, a little mini of the Super Healthy Skin Body Cram Perfect for taking away on holiday. And here we go, I've opened up the other goodies inside the delivery. First of all, this incredible smelling candle, and honestly, the smell and also the pattern on it is always going to remind me of Palm Beach. It just reminds me of the smell in some of the stores there. Really kind of tropical, but also musky and expensive smelling. I just think it looks absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to light that later. And then some of my summer essentials, this is the sunscreen and primer. Perfect. I, I apply this after my moisturizer as my SPF and then my makeup goes straight on top. SPF 50. It is very similar indeed to my SkinCeuticals SPF 50 but a fraction of the price. And then this is the SPF 30 um, Nourishing Lip Balm. I literally wear this every single day in summer and I needed a topper because I just want one everywhere. I keep one in the kitchen, I keep one in my handbag, one in the car, one in my dressing room. I love them. And then this is something new. So this is their compact, and it is, as you can see, a refillable compact. This is their bronzer. It is the most gorgeous bronze. It just gives you the most natural looking bronze, and it's so long lasting. And it's actually got, um, I think it's squalene inside, so it's also got some skincare benefits, which is wonderful. And that just magnetizes in there and then you can just top up the actual powder and not need to buy a whole new compact every time. And then this angled brush to apply it with. Also makeup brushes, I feel like it can be so hard to get perfect ones at good prices, but the Beauty Pie ones, I can confirm, are amazing. Oh, and last but not least, underneath a new little um, travel beauty pouch. I love keeping my essentials in these when I'm traveling. I took the pink one with me to Palm Beach. I take it with me everywhere and I feel like this is going to be perfect for my skincare so I can keep makeup in one and skincare in another. So that's my new little makeup pouch. It's so a wonderful delivery from Beauty Pie. And then I actually was not expecting this. This is a delivery from a brand called Pharmacy really beautifully wrapped and presented. I have a feeling, oh does that say the gluttonous gardener. Ooh, what is this? I'm so excited to open this up. Oh my gosh, I think, oh my goodness. I think this is gonna be a blueberry plant and it says, we're pleased to share pharmacies, Pharmacy Beauty's new 10% niacinamide night mask, number four mask in Sephora, sold out globally within the first week of launch and now in stock at Feel Unique. Oh my gosh, do we have a blueberry plant and a night cream in here? So here's the information on the night cream. An overnight soothing mask to visibly improve skin texture, refine pores and strengthen the skin's moisture barrier. That sounds incredible. 40 pounds for 50 mil. With upcycled blueberry seed oil, a super fruit and antioxidant re to restore and revive dull skin. That sounds like exactly the kind of thing that I would need in the summer months. Oh my gosh, it looks like it's still alive. Oh, wow. This is so exciting. Oh my goodness. Some herbal tea also tucked away in there. Ooh la la, that is lovely packaging. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I cannot wait to give this a try later on. That consistency looks absolutely gorgeous. Really light, but hopefully super hydrating after a day in the sun. What a fabulous delivery. Thank you, pharmacy. Okay, so it says on here that blueberry bushes require an acid soil. So if rhododendrons and camellias flourish in your garden, blueberries will be at home. Rhododendrons and camellias do not like it in our garden, so I'm going to have to pop this in a pot with some ericaceous soil. It's kind of like a chemistry lesson when it comes to gardening, and also there are actually two plants in here because they pollinate each other. So I guess kind of like a boy plant and a girl plant. So it says that they should crop, maybe not this year, maybe next year, um, late summer, and then you get some really gorgeous red leaves in autumn, and then they'll drop their leaves over winter and then flower in spring. So lots of action throughout the year. This is just so so fun, honestly, <laughs> how times have changed, but PR deliveries that contain plants and especially bushes that are going to fruit, <laughs> literally my favorite thing in the world. So absolutely love that and can't wait to try the night cream. Thank you so much to the pharmacy team.
Okay, so I've got my truck down in the bottom of the garden and my gloves. These are the gloves that I got from Amazon last week before I came out, so they should do the trick for keeping my hands and nails in perfect condition. So, as you can see, we have quite a lot that's overgrown, a few things that need tidying up. I can't believe I picked the sweet peas yesterday. I literally picked every flower off and now we have about a hundred more. <laughs> so that's one of the fun jobs. So I'll leave that till last, but I've got quite a lot that I need to do. For example, tidying up my pumpkins. Sometimes I don't like to sit on the ground, so I might just like prop up some of the fruit that's down there. I'm probably gonna end up having this part of the lawn becoming a bit of a pumpkin patch. I also need to snip the top of my beans, which will encourage outward growth. I need to string back some of the sweet peas, which have gone a little bit wild. I need to create a new structure for my mange too. And funnily, the flowers, which will turn into pods or pods will start to form. I don't know if you can see, not really. But yes, basically wherever there's, a, oh, you can see here. So wherever there's a flower, a pod and a fruit or a vegetable rather will form. And the flowers are not too dissimilar to my sweet pea flowers. They look absolutely beautiful. And then I need to support some more of my pumpkins in there. I can see some giant courgettes in there. And I noticed um, some really big ones while I was watering this morning. That's one of the reasons I love to water by hand is you can really analyze your um, vegetables and what's growing as well as feed them at the same time. My beans need stringing and everywhere just needs a little bit of a tidy. I also need to pull out some of my salad lettuce which is starting to bolt and then I might order some new compost to add to these areas to freshen it up before I plant my autumn seeds hopefully later in the week. just doing a quick makeup top up and <laughs> releasing the curls before heading over to Rory and Nathan's. It is Rory's birthday today and we're going out to a new restaurant called G's or Gee's, probably G's in Oxford, which is gonna be really nice. I have never been into Oxford in the evening before, only that one time um, with Lala. So it's gonna be good fun. Good fun indeed. Um, so as you would have seen, I have spent the last couple of hours out in the garden, made myself a delicious iced oat milk latte. I need to figure out how to turn this into a lavender iced oat milk latte like they had at the uh, Four Seasons Palm Beach. It's probably just a tiniest bit of lavender syrup, <laughs> but I have got plenty of lavender in the garden, so that would be lovely to make. And I had a very productive couple of hours really just tidying the kitchen garden. I cannot believe how much has grown in the one week that I've been away. Obviously it's been really lovely weather here, typical. I always go away when it's great weather in the UK. Um, and I think Charlie has been watering everything. Did you see that ginormous courgette that I pulled out? I could not believe, and I didn't even see it yesterday when I went down yesterday evening and did my harvesting. I didn't even spot it. It was quite like deep within the, um, 
the raised bed, there's gonna be a lot of pumpkins. I think I'm gonna look like the Cotswolds pumpkin farm come mid to end of September. And yeah, so many more sweet peas to be picked. I'm gonna take, Nathan is a real keen cook, so I'm gonna take some of the courgettes over to him. And I was listening, I wasn't watching, but I was listening to some courgette recipes while I was doing my pottering about. So I've got a few ideas in my mind. I'm probably gonna place an Ocado order in the morning. Um, sometimes they manage to do next day delivery which would be amazing because then I can show you some of the things that I make in this vlog but if not it'll be in the one after so without further ado let's see if these curls have actually done anything today because the last twice that I've done heatless curls nothing has happened it's just been an epic fail but this time I did have the Aveda mousse in my hair oh I've got a bit of a kink down there um but I always think with heatless curls, you might as well try because aside from looking like <laughs> a bit of a plonger all day, you don't really have anything to lose because it doesn't damage your hair in the slightest. And actually today it was quite nice having my hair off my face. So that one is released. My Disney vlog, as, you're, as I'm filming this, my Disney vlog, um, the cruise part one of our trip is about to go live in like 15 minutes and I'm so excited for everyone to watch it. Okay. Please work. Right, this is the crazy stage. Well, they all feel pretty dry. <laughs> I'd be shocked if they weren't dry, to be honest, because today has been so toasty. I'm feeling optimistic, actually. <laughs> you must let me know when you guys get so bored of my hair endeavors. Hmm. Right, I definitely need my fine tooth comb, but actually I think the curls feel like they're quite sturdy. Oh, I've got a leaf in my hair. Ooh, this actually looks like it may have worked. Oh my gosh. Have we found a product that makes heatless curls actually work on me again? Because my hair is still just as silky. The reason I, I feel that it wasn't working before was because I was taking such good care of my hair that it was getting too silky. And silky hair just, oh my gosh, guys, silky hair does not hold a style very well. Um, but I wasn't willing to sacrifice the silkiness of my hair but I think we might have got a solution. So this is the only thing that I did any different. I applied this in to my hair. Literally the only thing that I did that was any different. Obviously I have been outside all day today under the warm sun and they've probably been, been in my hair for about three hours. I'm not gonna brush it out any more just yet. Obviously they're not perfect. They're just a bit wild at the moment. Um, but how long do I have? I need to leave at five. 10 minutes, I'm gonna really quickly, well, I'm not leaving in 10 minutes, I need to <laughs> round off the vlogging in 10 minutes. I'm gonna super quickly show you some of the things that I purchased in Palm Beach slash my entire trip. I'm gonna gather them all together and then I'm gonna show you. Okay, this really is going to be a speed unboxing and you're probably gonna see my hair deflate as I go through all of these bits, but okay. So chronologically from, in the airport. You will have seen if you watched um, the first vlog that Freddie and I both made a purchase from Dior in the airport. It has become a very fun tradition when we go on our fabulous trips that we purchase matching treats. <laughs> and I was a little bit flustered at the time because I just realized upon getting my camera out to vlog that we were in Dior doing shopping, um, that I had actually left my vlog camera at home. So I had to steal Freddie's vlog camera the entire trip, which was a bit of a nightmare, not gonna lie. <laughs> so I was very flustered. However, <laughs> this made me feel a lot better. I'm going to blame this on Freddie and I know that the feeling is mutual. She's gonna blame it on me, um, but she tried on the necklace version of this and she just looked sensational. It was so perfect, so classic. And I thought I rather love the look of the bracelet and it looks really nice when worn alongside my watch as well. So I wore it the entire trip. So this isn't an unboxing, but this is the bag that I came with. Yes, I bought it at home. <laughs> um, and then in a beautiful little box, which I'm sure I'll find some use for, tissue paper, um, ooh, and then it actually came. I've just tried to recreate how this looked when I actually unboxed it for the first time. So within this little pouch, 
is a cushion and on the cushion is this beautiful pearl bracelet with the CD of Christian Dior. So Freddie's necklace is basically exactly the same um, like this, but the necklace version, I nearly always wear my Omega necklace. So for me, adding to my wrist stack made a lot more sense. Um, it has got it's quite adjustable, it's got a few different size settings. So yes, you may have spotted this in the vlogs, but I think it looks gorgeous. Next to my watch, very elegant, very classic, very timeless, and I just absolutely love it. The next thing that I bought on the trip was in Disney World, and of course I had to get a pair of ears. You have to embrace the whole Disney experience. I believe these are the 50th anniversary ears. I was very grateful for them actually, for keeping my hair held back on the day that we were in the park. Oh, they actually do light up as well. Not sure if you'll be able to see that, but they do light up, <laughs> which is great fun. I can't remember the order now, but we are whizzing ahead to Palm Beach because aside from lots of sweets and ice creams, I didn't buy anything else on the Disney cruise ship. And the next thing that I purchased in Palm Beach was a Tory Burch candle in this really beautiful store, which you'll have seen us going into if you watched the Palm Beach vlog, which will have been up um, last Tuesday. Speaking of which, I have decided, at least for the next few weeks, I'm only gonna be doing two vlogs a week. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, it's because I do have some travel coming up and it is very hard to keep to three vlogs a week when I'm traveling. And you guys are busy, you know, it's summer, so hopefully you don't mind. There might be a third vlog sneaking in every now and then. Um, but yeah, if you think you're missing a Thursday vlog, that's why, so I hope you guys don't mind. So inside this beautiful box, and look at the pattern on this, it's so lovely is the most lovely, gorgeous little candle. It's got a green, I thought it was a peacock. It's got longer legs, maybe it's a unicorn, who knows? This is the Antigua candle. And I love the, fra the fragrance, it's very soft and very fresh, but also I love the jar and I can't wait to use it as a makeup brush holder. Oh, heavenly, I'm actually gonna keep it in the box until I decide where to burn it because you don't wanna get your candles dusty. Up next was Love Shack Fancy. I ended up with three carrier bags from Love Shack Fancy. Um, I had a massive one for my hat, which again, you might have seen on my Instagram or on um, the vlog, but I have a thing for hats. I love them. Um, and this one was just absolutely gorgeous. I did have to squish it into my suitcase, so I hope that it will refer back to its original shape. Do I wanna risk flattening my hair right now? They always look so silly when you're not in the right like outfit or, you know, vibe for a hat. But I just think it's absolutely gorgeous and I love things that keep the sun off my face. They wrap everything so beautifully in Love Shack Fancy, including this beautiful ribbon, which I'm just gonna slip off. <sighs> so on here. Yeah. Everything needs a little steam. I'll try to steam things and do a little try on view. This cardigan I just thought was really cute for summer evenings. It's got some really cute little pastel colored um, embroidery on it, rainbows, pearl buttons, just a nice cozy thing to pop over your shoulders in the summer over a nice little lightweight dress. And then this dress, you'll have seen me trying it on in the store. I was very tempted between this and the shorter version, but I just thought I would get a lot more use out of this one. It's got a smocked bodice, really beautiful fabric, ruffly sleeves, and a gorgeous, very soft floral pattern within it. Up next was Zimmerman. I've gone blurry. They had so many gorgeous things in Zimmerman, and I could easily have bought so much in there, but I did try and practice a little bit of self-control. Freddie and I both agreed that this was the most me skirt ooh, in the whole world. It is a midi length skirt, and it's got this floral pattern all over it. Again, I will show you a little try-on clip. I think with a little crop top, it could be absolutely gorgeous, really beautiful, lightweight material at the moment. Very much needs a steam. Um, and it comes with its very own raffia belt. And we all know how much I love to reuse Zimmerman belts. In fact, it would look really fantastic with the dress that I'm wearing now. I didn't belt this today because obviously I've just been gardening. This is an Amazon dress, by the way. I love it. It's a really gorgeous sage stripe. Um, but I think it would look even better belted like so. And they had a fantastic sale section in the Zimmerman store as well. We've got another trip coming up this summer to somewhere very, very, very hot. 
and also where you have to dress quite modestly. So these are very lightweight kind of silky trouser. I thought they'd be fantastic for traveling and they've got snails and butterflies and other fun things and this really cute also butterfly style um, belt buckle which I think Alex Monroe would very much approve of. Next was the Erin Boutique just off Worth Avenue in Palm Beach. I smelt their new Rose de Grasse Joyful Bloom fragrance and I thought it was absolutely heavenly. She said that this is a slightly stronger version of one of their classic fragrances and I do love a strong scent and the bottle is absolutely gorgeous as well. How elegant, how elegant and beautiful is that? I haven't had an Erin fragrance in quite some time but I thought that was absolutely beautiful so I will be misting myself in this before we go. And finally from Erin they had some really gorgeous homeware. I purchased this little set of four coasters. I'm sure you guys know that this is very much my kind of style when it comes to table setting, tableware, and raffia rattan was just everywhere in Palm Beach. It was very much that kind of vibe. So in this little bundle is four of the coasters, and then I also bought four of these mats as well. I thought they just looked absolutely gorgeous, and I've not seen anything like this in the UK perfect for throwing together for an evening an evening out on the marble table outside the kitchen door so that is everything that i purchased in palm beach and in florida i now really really need to get cracking so i'll see you guys in oxford just about to head to Rory and Nathan's and Nathan as I mentioned earlier is a superb cook and he also has an air fryer so I think he'll know just what to do with my courgettes we've got the melon courgette the um, pumpkin-y courgette top right and then the traditional courgettes these two in the ribbed and the normal version so he's got quite the selection as well as some mange to to nibble on and I'm quite chuffed with this idea I've put it all inside an old inside a glossy box which arrived earlier just lined with some baking paper. It is Monday morning, aka UK heat wave day one. We've got two mega hot days coming up. Today the headlines are just hottest day ever on UK records. Um, I think we're going to get up to 39 degrees today. It's currently 9 o'clock in the morning and it is already pretty toasty. I've had the sprinklers on at the flower beds and I've been doing a lot of hand watering this morning since about half past five. I, I woke up naturally at half five and I thought, you know what, I'll go and do my watering so that the plants can have a hydrated start to the day. After my week in Florida, I have got quite a lot of work and shopping, as you can tell, to catch up with. So... While the sun is on the main table, I'm gonna make this my little office for the morning. It is such a beautiful morning so far. I'm gonna try and get loads of work done over the next couple of hours so that I can just relax and pretend I'm on holiday when the temperatures start to get boiling hot. I've also been researching some recipes for courgettes and I'm gonna make something lovely for lunch. I've just realized, however, I've not watered these pots, so I'm gonna get that done. Dexy, I'll allow you out now, but in 20 minutes or so, it's just going to be too hot for little boys. It's going to be too hot for little boys later. You're so long. You're so glossy. I missed you so much. I talked about you every day and I showed everybody your photo. I did. I just adore you. You're lovely. Setting up the Dyson fan for the boys. Luckily, 
where our house is so old and the walls are really, really chunky stone, it actually doesn't get too hot in here. We're very, very lucky. If you see this stone here, all the walls are like that throughout the house and this kind of thickness. So it really does keep the warmth in in winter and keep the coolness in during summer, which is actually perfect. Old houses were built very cleverly, but it still gets a little bit hot for sausage dogs in here. So I'm setting the Dyson to the coolest setting because normally Dickens likes to lay in this corner when it's a really hot day. Mummy, I really don't like hot days, you know, I wear a fur coat all the time, it's part of my look and I really don't like anything above 22 degrees. A little snore. Okay, my darlings, I'm filming a voiceover because my brain was absolutely fried this lunchtime. So with a bigger courgette, I'm doing a baked courgette or baked zucchini for my lunch. As you can see, I'm hollowing out the middle and I'm keeping the flesh from the middle in a bowl to the side. I'm going to end up baking these two kind of boats that I've now created with the hollowed out middles. And then the insides, I'm just chopping them to make it a little bit smaller, ready to fry. A smaller courgette I'm adding um, I'm just slicing up and adding that and the boats onto a onto a baking tray and then I'm frying the inside of the courgette the courgette flesh along with some spring onion just with a little bit of olive oil for a few minutes to soften here's the boats and the chopped smaller courgette on the baking dish I'm just adding some olive oil and some seasoning before adding the inside bit. Oh, and I also added a little bit of dried thyme, also fresh from the garden. So this is what it looks like. I also cooked some rice and added that to my spring onion and courgette flesh. And you could also use zucchini, brown rice. I used brown rice, you could use white rice. Adding that to the middle along with some parmesan and some pine nuts, so it's extra tasty and crispy. And I popped that in the oven for about 20 minutes at 200 degrees and enjoyed with some salad. It was so delicious. And then I made my iced lavender latte for my pudding. Well, darlings, I have to apologize for my huge lack of vlogging today, but it's just, as I said in Palm Beach, it's just too darn hot to vlog. I've literally just been outside melting, getting some work done, and I've just made myself an iced oat milk lavender latte inspired by the coffees that I had at the Palm Beaches um, Four Seasons Hotel. I haven't tried it yet. All I did was essentially just shove a load of lavender in the blender when I made my latte. I think what I'm going to do next time is actually properly make some lavender syrup, which I don't think is too challenging, but I was in a bit more of a rush this time. So hopefully this will be delicious. It certainly looks wonderful. Okay, my darlings, it's about half past seven now and we're about to have dinner down here in the cut flower garden. I've brought down one of my Mrs. Alice wicker vases. I filled it with water and I'm just going to snip, I think, some of the dahlias and cosmos that are yet to be snipped, including this ginormous one here. I've got the sprinklers on as a little bit of a centerpiece for our dinner. I've got the new Erin mats, our Amazon little napkins, and I'm very much enjoying this pink and green colour scheme. So I'm going to do some snipping. Charlie's in the kitchen. I think we're having a nonna tonda pasta dish tonight, which should be delicious. Good morning my darlings, it is now Tuesday morning, heatwave day two. I have been awake since half past four this morning, if not four o'clock actually. I don't know why. Our room is not actually too hot because we've got no less than three <laughs> Dyson fans 
pointing at us in bed and we've done everything that you're meant to do keep the shutters closed during the day so that the sunlight doesn't come in and then we're opening up the windows when it gets darker and cooler and breezier in the evenings but there is actually no breeze it is so still and i know that everyone's always like guys come on it's only it's only 37 degrees or whatever but here in the uk we're not built for heat and our homes are certainly not built for heat so we really do struggle <laughs> when it comes to these heat wave days but i'm not gonna lie i still absolutely love them i would 100 percent choose a heat wave day over a stormy rainy day any day <laughs> So no complaints from me. Uh, so I've been out watering the garden. I've got some work done and it's 6 a.m. now or just gone quarter past six. So I thought I would squeeze in a quick Peloton ride to start the day and then have a nice pampering shower so I feel all nice and fresh. I've got a few errands to run in Banbury in our nearest town. Um, and then I think it's gonna be another day of working outside and maybe doing a little bit of <laughs> sunbathing because yesterday I think got up to 37 degrees but today it's meant to get up to 39 so it's gonna be a scorcher. I'm currently attempting to do a little bit of gardening, although it is 37 degrees. I think today is officially the hottest that we've ever recorded here in the UK, but I just wanted to show you how, sorry about the breeze, although it is very much welcome. I wanted to show you how amazing the verbena looks around the greenhouse. It is meant to be arriving tomorrow, which is very exciting, um, but I think it looks fabulous how tall it's grown and you almost have to walk through a verbena rainforest to get into the greenhouse. I really hope it still looks like this by the time the structure is installed. Another day, another vase filled with the most fragrant sweet peas I have ever known. They're just such beautiful colours and I have this one stalk which is producing red flower or this really beautiful raspberry colour and all the others are this gorgeous pinky, purple, greeny, beautiful shade. But yeah, I just can't keep up anymore. Every day I'm coming out and picking them and every few hours they are completely replenished. There must be still a hundred flower buds on here, but I am running out of vases. <laughs> Okay, my darlings, heat wave update. This is literally how I look every time it is a heat wave day. I don't know how anyone can function without a visor. This is probably the best ever thing that I have purchased from Amazon. Yes, I look seriously dorky, but I don't really care because I just, I find that I stay so much cooler when the sun is not on my face. Oh, and it shields a very bad hair day. Anyway, I know I've been rubbish at vlogging again today because I'm my brain is melting. However, I posted a photo yesterday on my Instagram stories of my lavender latte and um, very much inspired by the lavender lattes that I had at the Four Seasons in Palm Beach. So I thought I would share with you how I did it. Actually, yesterday I cheated. I literally just shoved some dried lavender in the blender when I blended my coffee, oat milk, vanilla syrup and ice cubes so that was a cheats way of doing it tastes just as nice but you do get some kind of like gray 
floating bits on the top. Today I'm going to do it properly to see how my camera just can't cope with the heat. But I'm going to attempt it the proper way today, which is by actually making a lavender syrup. It's really, really simple. Three ingredients, dried lavender, sugar and water in a saucepan, stirring regularly and that and then let them cool down and you can keep that mixture in the fridge for a good couple of weeks and I just pour like half a shot's worth into my coffee so I'm gonna make the syrup now I think I might do a little TikTok on how to do it as well seeing as it's very wholesome perennial millennial style content um, so I'll leave the TikTok linked down below but I will also show you the highlights of how to do it so essentially I'm just adding the lavender and some white sugar to some simmering water and I'm just going to keep on stirring this until it turns into a gloopy syrup. Okay, so I've just seen a challenge on TikTok where apparently 38 degrees is the prime temperature for frying an egg outside and we've definitely never been able to do this in the UK before. So I've bought my cast iron always pan outside. I didn't want to mark the patio so I put it on the um, marble thingy-majig while my lavender syrup cools down. I'm gonna leave it here for five minutes to get super duper hot. And then let's see, before watching the end of this um, experiment, let me know in the comments below whether you think this is gonna work or not. I quite fancy an egg on toast for my See if you can toast lunch, the bread on next to it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> no. We'll give it a go. Okay guys, the egg is in the pan. I thought I might as well just crack it and let it do its thing and not wait for the pan to heat up much longer. So, for anyone that's actually interested in my wonderfully scientific experiment, it's currently 20 past three. So I guess we'll check on this in like 20 minutes. Although I swear it's actually already turning white. Or am I just imagining these bits here turning white? We shall see, the pan certainly feels very hot. And one hour later, this is the result of my somewhat failed experiment. As you can see, the egg has not cooked. I think what has happened is it's actually started to evaporate um, and we're just left with a little bit of, I guess that's kind of cooked, but this looks absolutely disgusting. I'm not going to advise that anybody eats this. So I hate wasting food, but I think this is one that is good for the bin. Okay, my darlings, I have just finished my TikTok for the iced lavender latte. I'm actually yet to try it, but it looks absolutely lovely. I'm gonna film the final clip while it still looks perfect, and then we'll do a little taste test. Okay, my darlings, the TikTok is filmed, and I've just done a taste test, and I can confirm that this is the best drink I think I have ever made. The perfect subtle hint of lavender, the perfect amount of sweetness. Oh my goodness, I think I've discovered my new favorite summer drink, an iced oat milk lavender latte. Yum!